a warm welcome to this presentation about the fully automated optical hematocrit measurement from dry blood spots for the analysis of phosphatidyl ethanol. This work has been developed by the CAMAC DBS laboratory in collaboration with the Institute of Forensic Medicine in Bern and the University of Applied Sciences and Arts Northwestern Switzerland. Phosphatidyl ethanol is a direct alcohol marker which is formed within the human body when alcohol is present. Thereby, the choline head from phosphatidyl choline gets replaced with ethanol to result in phosphatidyl ethanol. PET itself has a half life of 3 to 12 days. Up to today, um, about 48 different PET homologs have been found in human blood whereby PET-16081 and PET-16082 are the most prominent ones and often measured together. PET concentrations reflect drinking habits during the past two to four weeks and can be a valuable tool um, for abstinence monitoring. As PET accumulates within the membrane of the red blood cells, um, PET is somewhat hematocrit dependent. Due to the presence of various enzymes and also as PET contains two fatty acid chains, PET is unstable in liquid blood unless stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius. However, it has been found that PET is stable when stored as dried blood spot. Therefore, many laboratories around the globe have changed to dried blood spot microsampling when analyzing phosphatidyl ethanol. Thereby, a small amount of blood, about 10 to 20 microliters, are applied onto a absorbent material, for example, cotton. On the left, you can see a dry blood spot card in the autocollect format. Whereas in the figure on the right, you can see a sampling kit for the DBS analysis. Only a very limited amount of tools is required, such as lancets, disinfect towels, a instruction manual, the card, and some packaging material. Using DBS sampling, the specimens can be sent back to the laboratory using a standard envelope without any cooling. When it comes to dry blood spot analysis, we have a hematocrit area bias. This means that dependent on the hematocrit content, the red blood cell content of the blood, a different spot area is resulting from the same amount of blood. This means if we have a low hematocrit, a large area and a bright color spot is generally formed. With a high hematocrit, the blood is not as liquid as when low hematocrit uh, is present. Therefore, the blood does not spread as wide and only a small area, typically um, recognized by a somewhat darker color, is formed. When performing DBS sub-punching, which is the most typical form of, of DBS analysis, this results in an area bias due to this um, difference in spreading area. Typically, the hematocrit area bias is not very significant as long as the analyte itself is distributed equally within the red blood cell fraction and the plasma fraction of the blood. The real case sample here for diclofenac represents that well, that the uncorrected result remains within about plus minus 15% measurement insecurity. For phosphatidyl ethanol, however, this equal distribution between red blood cell fraction and plasma fraction is not the case. PET accumulates only within the red blood cell fraction and is not readily present within the plasma fraction of 
the blot. This means when we have a look at an authentic blot sample as depicted here after centrifugation, that PET is contained within the 30 to 50 percent of red blood cells which are typically found within an authentic human blood sample. Due to the fact that PET is present in this red blood cell fraction, PET results are hematocrit dependent and this dependency should be accounted for during the measurement. To further study this hematocrit dependency of phosphatidyl ethanol in detail, we took blood from four PET positive individuals by sampling uh, liquid lithium heparin blood. Afterwards, we separated the blood by spinning on a centrifuge, resulting in plasma and red blood cells. These plasma and red blood cells were then artificially mixed to result in a hematocrit calibration from 0.2 to 0.7. These blood samples were then spotted onto dry blood spot cards. Once the samples were dried, we performed fully automated DBS extraction and hematocrit analysis. Thereby, an image processing module recognizes the spot size area, diameter, and center. Afterwards, using this data, hematocrit measurement is performed, followed by internal standard spray application and the extraction onto an online SPE LCMS-MS system. As displayed within this short video sequence, the non-destructive hematocrit detection, which is independent of the DBSH or humidity is performed within a few seconds. A laser ensures that the probe to cart distance is held constant. The science behind the single wavelength hematocrit measurement is the following. A probe is lowered onto the DBS spot. Several fibers enlight the dry blood spots and one reed fiber leads back to a spectrometer where a specific wavelength of the reflectance is monitored. The measurement itself is independent of aging due to the fact that the absolute amount of different hemoglobin derivatives remain constant over time. The reflectance measurement can then be linked to a known hematocrit content of the calibrator samples resulting in a linear regression. This has been developed and already published by the laboratory of Christoph Staff in Belgium. With our novel developed automated hematocrit reader, we generated a calibration out of six subjects to have a calibration curve for processing of the PET. We then measured PET and we saw a strong dependency of phosphatidyl ethanol results on the hematocrit of the sample itself. As you can see, the hematocrit results by reflectance and by centrifuge were highly overlapping. Out of the four studied subjects, we then generated a linear regression analysis to elaborate the actual um, hematocrit dependency of phosphatidyl ethanol and found a common correction factor. We then took this general correction factor and applied it onto our four studied subjects. As you can see with the red results, which are the uncorrected ones, without any correction, the DBS analysis of PET is heavily hematocrit dependent. Whereas when applying the correction factor as depicted in purple, we can nicely correct for this hematocrit 
dependency. The results has been recently accepted in the journal Alcohol and will be available to the public within the next weeks. With this, I'm at the end of my presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. And if you want to learn more about PET, and if you're interested to join an international network of PET enthusiasts, I invite you to have a look at the PETnet Phosphatidyl Ethanol Research Society. And I'm happy to answer your questions regarding the just presented research. Thank you very much.